Hello and welcome to another Camp Landing History video. I'm Dr. George Craftsman. I serve the museum as its historian. And today I'd like to chat with you a little bit about entertainment and recreation at Camp Landing during World War II. men serving and training at Camp Landing were all quite young. Entertainment provided both a form of relaxation from their arduous training, and the rec recreation actually supplemented the training effort. For most of the soldiers training here, their only real form of, of entertainment was in a day room. There were 175 of these day rooms at Camp Landing. GIs could go there to read newspapers, to read, uh, to read magazines. There were record players in each of these day rooms and some records that they could listen to. The intent was to provide sort of a home-like place for the soldiers. Now soldiers who were training here did not have a lot of free time. Their days were completely filled, and most of their evenings were spent either cleaning equipment, polishing boots, or studying training materials. But both the station complement, those men who were trained uh, assigned here more permanently, and the soldiers training here had movie theaters available to them. When the post was mobilized for federal service, Two large circus tents, you see one here on the left side, two large circus tents were installed. And those were the Post's first movie theaters. When the Post uh, was then uh, uh, transitioned to a more permanent facility, a series of eight movie theaters were built. Some with stages, some without. As typical in all the the Army Post, Camp Landing soldiers often had access to first-run movies two or more weeks in advance of when civilian movie theaters would get those new movies. Camp Landing also had uh, live entertainment. There was a large amphitheater located on the Federal Parade Ground, and in that amphitheater there were U.S. shows, there was an Army a service called camp shows that were staged in both the uh, amphitheater and on occasion, if the weather was not cooperating, in the large field house on the post. Perhaps one of the favorite events that happened were shows that were called the Camel Caravans. And Camel Caravans were sponsored by the Camel Cigarette People. And it was a smoker. The soldiers got free cigarettes. There were a whole series of organized sports happening on the post. Boxing was very popular at the time, and units would stage boxing matches from across uh, competing with, with each other. But there was also football, there was uh, basketball, softball, and, and uh, baseball. Uh, teams that competed both within the post and uh, a favorite form of competition was any of the, the uh, naval stations in the Jacksonville area. There was also bowling. There were two bowling alleys on the, on the post. And many of the units, especially the station complement units, many of those units had their own bowling teams. There were tennis courts, volleyball courts, and of course, the lake provided a perfect place for swimming. Beaches were maintained across the containment area. All of this recreation and entertainment 
was, uh, was put together by the Post Athletic and Recreation Section of the Special Services Branch. And that branch spent approximately $10,000 per month, per month, for the uh, entertainment and recreation activities on the post. Service clubs also provided significant recreational and entertainment options for soldiers. A most popular uh, event were the dances that were held at the service clubs on an almost weekly basis. Young women from Gainesville and Stark, uh, Jacksonville, St. Augustine, as far away as Daytona Beach, were brought into the post for these dances and transportation was provided for them. Frequently soldiers met young women, began to date them, and in many cases, they resulted in a marriage. The special service branch, again, sponsored these dances. They spent approximately $2,000 per month to stage these dances. A lot of that money went into the transportation, bringing young women to the post. There was another option right on the lake for soldier entertainment. It was Strickland's. And here you see a photograph of Strickland's. At Strickland's, you could bathe. They had a dock. Uh, you could swim in the lake. Uh, you could, there was a snack bar. You could buy soft drinks or uh, some food items. However, dancing was strictly prohibited at Strickland's. And there was absolutely no alcohol permitted at Strickland's itself. So young couples might enjoy Strickland's together, but soldiers on the look for a beer avoided Strickland's. Camp Landing maintained uh, a series of sub posts. Daytona Beach, Gainesville, Jacksonville, Lake Butler, a favorite travel place, a destination. Palatka and Stark. We have another video in which we talk about the growth of Boomtown. And here in this photograph, you see the movie theater that was uh, built in the Boomtown area. In Boomtown, a local watering hole was the Soldier's Joy Cafe. And here you see a photograph of the Soldier's Joy Cafe. Not many uh, training soldiers made it to the soldier's joy, but a lot of the cadre, a lot of the station complement, were frequent visitors in the soldier's joy. It was the closest bar to Camp Landing itself. As the movie theater was destroyed, the soldier's joy was destroyed also in the fire. Stark was the closest town of any size. And here you see some photographs of, of some life in, in Stark. In Stark, there was also, built for the war, a, uh, a facility called the Blanding Center. And it was at the terminus of the buses that came from, uh, from Camp Landing to Stark itself. And here in this photograph, you see the bar. Soldiers could buy a beer here, and it was uh, a, a, a favorite watering hole as soldiers first came into uh, to Stark and as they were waiting for a bus. Unfortunately, we've lost the Blanding Center too. Uh, if, you, uh, if you follow Route 16 into Stark today, just as you enter the city on the right, you will find where the uh, Blanding Center was. But it burned down in a fire after the war. Now, soldiers who, um, who satisfactorily passed the, the normal Saturday morning inspection were, were given a, a pass that was good until Reveille on Monday morning. And one of the favorite act activities for soldiers with a pass was to go to uh, St. Augustine, to the St. Augustine Recreation Center. The St. Augustine Center had originally been set up to, uh, 
to house MP training. But in June 1941, it was converted to the Recreation Center. The Recreation Center could house up to a thousand men. And on a typical weekend, 600 to 700 GIs were there. Transportation from and to Camp Landing was free. GIs could spend the night at the Recreation Center for free, but they did have to pay for their own meals. The Recreation Center had a PX, where a soldier could buy a beer, hot dogs, candy, most any of the items that were available for sale in the Camp Landing PXs were also available at St. Augustine. Buses were available to take soldiers to two reserve beaches. For soldiers who wanted to do sightsee, there were guided tours of historic St. Augustine, as well as a cruise on the Matanzas River. And in the evenings, the St. Augustine USO clubs typically had live entertainment and often dances. As the Women's Army Corps grew at Camp Landing, a separate section of the Recreation Center was set aside for uh, women serving in the WACs or in the Army Nurse Corps. The Special Services Branch noted that a soldier could spend uh, an enjoying, relaxing uh, weekend in St. Augustine at the Recreation Center for only $2. And that was important for privates who were earning $21 a month. Well, thank you for watching another Camp Landing uh, history video. We most appreciate your spending this time with us. Please come and visit with us. The museum is open every day from noon to four. For the Camp Landing Museum and all our wonderful volunteers, it's Dr. George Cressman signing off.